Belly fat is really easy to gain, yet often the hardest area to lose. And there's actually two types. There's that stubborn belly fat, we all know that's on top of your abs, but there's also a more dangerous type of belly fat stored deep within your organs, known as the visceral fat. This can create some serious health problems. You don't know who I am, I'm Azri, I'm a doctor. I used to be 46 pounds overweight with belly fat and it was getting really unhealthy. I'm here to show you what worked for me as well as my clients in an evidence-based approach. I came up with these five easy steps for anyone to start doing today to lose the belly fat for good. This is why you might have been struggling to lose the belly fat in the past. The tissue is actually a little more metabolically active than other forms of stored body fat. It won't be crunches targeting the area where the fat is stored. In fact, it might not make any difference at all but there is evidence exercise may help reduce visceral fat, which I'll get into later on. You'll know exactly what exercise is going to help best by the end of the video. I know people don't want to hear this. The real key to losing belly fat is just getting into a caloric deficit consistently and doing it for long enough. And that's the easiest way to do this. It's by modifying your diet. This is where I'm going to give you the real method on how to lose the belly fat Fitness and health gurus won't tell you about this. So step one, find out roughly how many calories you're eating per day. Step two, find out how many calories you should be eating to lose fat, which you can do by using the free calorie calculator on my Instagram. If you want it, drop me a message on Instagram and I'll send it right over and I'll help out with any advice if you have any questions about losing the belly fat. Step three, simply try to close the gap using foods you like. So you have to be eating foods that you like and look forward to, to do this over a long period of time. So people usually know around 20 of their favorite foods and what they should be eating, but eating what you like so you don't build up the cravings and binge. So it's more sustainable than the whole chicken broccoli out of containers diet that 99% of people are doing right now is what you need to do. It helps to have an awareness of food groups as well. When I say your 20 favorite foods, pick your 20 favorite foods that are reasonably healthy choices across the food groups. There's six of them. There's the meat or the high protein group. There's the fat group. There's the fibrous vegetable group. There's the starch group. Then there's the milk group and there's the fruit group. So choose your three favorite foods across each of these food groups and choose your three favorite ones you like the most. And there's your diet. Those groups are going to make up 80% of your diet. And I like to do something called the 80-20 rule where 80% of those fall within those groups and 20% of those fit in with whatever you like, those cheap foods. Let's say the higher fat, higher sugar, higher calorie foods, so, you know, cookies, donuts, whatever you like, ice cream, doesn't matter. And that's a healthy diet still, and that will hold you down for life. Not just a dieting phase where you lose the weight and gain it back again and again. So how important is protein in the whole picture? Protein intake, adequate protein intake is crucial. Among the macronutrients that are most important, this one is key to preserving muscle mass. You need protein, not just for protein synthesis to grow your muscle, but also to maintain your muscle so you don't get this skinny fat look. So protein also has a higher energy cost in terms of its digestion. So technically you do burn more calories eating more protein. So you spend about 30% of those calories just trying to process it. And in theory, you take a diet that's 100% protein, you're spending about 30% of the calories just trying to digest it, which isn't the case with carbohydrates and fats. You also feel more full eating protein because of the high satiety index. So the cravings won't be bringing you down at night. So if you consume 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight or around 0.7 grams per pound, that's a great starting point. And the next thing I really wanted to cover is what is visceral fat? So are there any kind of foods that promote the storage of visceral fat? And are there foods that people can eat to avoid getting the buildup of visceral fat? So it's one question that's been debated multiple times by researchers and they've been fighting over this for a long time. And the thing is, it's a big question to cover because if you're losing the body fat, then the visceral fat will always come off at some point because if you're losing overall fat, then visceral fat is coming off as well. So 
That is what's actually going to help you get rid of the visceral fat. But the next thing is visceral fat is mainly a concern for people gaining weight. And there is a study that compared different types of dietary fats. They compared polyunsaturated fat sources with saturated fat sources in a hypercaloric environment and the subjects were eating more calories. So the saturated fat rich diet that resulted in a greater storage of visceral fat and the polyunsaturated diet that didn't have as big as an effect. Let's move on to exercise. What is the best exercise to be doing? So exercise can burn off this visceral fat. You don't need to do a bunch of cardio. And the main thing is we want to actually incorporate some form of resistance training. Use this weight training, but also don't lift weights just for fat loss. So the benefits of resistance training are endless, right? You don't want to turn into this skinny fat look where you're losing the muscle mass and you're not really happy with your physique in the end anyways. So there's good research suggesting that the more muscle mass that you lose, the higher the hunger levels as well, which isn't very beneficial. So lifting weights is very, very important. You don't need cardio technically to lose the belly fat. But what you do need to do is make sure that your energy expenditure is high enough. So focusing on non-exercise activity is going to be super important. So that's everything between resting and doing direct exercise. So everything down to walking, you know, going up the stairs, just walking further to the mailbox, let's say. That is what is going to go down during a fat loss phase because technically you have less energy with less calories that you're taking in. So I'd suggest try and get in a 15, 20 minute walk at minimum per day. Everything that gets you moving counts. You're taking the stairs instead of the elevator. And even with proper nutrition, a recent study found that this is one of the most often overlooked variables that prevents you losing the belly fat. So those are just a few ways to increase your non-exercise activity, which is definitely going to help you in burning more calories more energy expenditure for you to lose fat overall. So there was another study done with 12 healthy males and females who on average slept about seven and a half hours per night. They had these subjects live in a research sleep lab and then placed them into two different sleep conditions. The first condition was a sleep restricted condition where they were only allowed to sleep for four hours per night. The other condition was a normal sleep condition where they were allowed to sleep nine hours per night. And during this entire process, they were allowed to eat as much and whatever food they wanted. After two weeks in each condition, here's what happened. The sleep restricted subjects on average consumed 300 more calories per day and they gained about a pound of body weight. Here's where things get really interesting. The subjects that were sleep restricted gained 8% more subcutaneous body fat than the normal sleep condition. So the normal sleep condition only gained about 4%. The other part of our bellies that stores fat is visceral fat region. So that's what we talked about earlier, the dangerous fat. The sleep restricted condition caused an increase in 11% of this visceral body fat. So less sleep, more visceral body fat, which has adverse health outcomes. You would expect they ate more calories. So they gained a little bit more body weight. So we would expect a little bit of gain in body fat, but not nearly to the extent that we saw localized to the belly region, to the abdominal region. So this study suggests that there may be a link to sleep restriction leading to overeating, which causes a gain in body fat that is preferentially stored in the belly region. Researchers put two groups of subjects on a weight loss diet with the same amount of calories. The only difference was one group slept eight and a half hours per night, while the other group slept five and a half hours per night. The result, both groups lost a similar amount of total weight. Both groups also did lose some muscle because they weren't lifting weights, but the well-slept group lost 1.6 times less muscle and lost 2.3 times more fat than the sleep restricted group, suggesting that a lack of sleep alone may in fact lead to more muscle loss and less fat during a weight loss phase. So number one takeaway from this is to make sure that you prioritize sleep. I would suggest that you get about seven hours per night. It's different for everyone. There's one more thing you need to add to your plan. Failure to do this is why so many people start out strong 
yet never end up successfully losing their belly fat. So this one thing is what causes people to fail. So I've seen this with many, many clients who come to me. They're obsessing over their belly fat. They might have seen some changes in the scale and they typically gain the weight back. They never seem to lose that stubborn belly fat. So they're working out, increase their cardio, or try and eat healthy. When you do this again and again, you typically make the diet unsustainable. So it's very difficult to stick to. And this is what causes people to either crash and burn or get this constant cycle of gaining and losing weight, yo-yo dieting. And one thing I noticed is most people also need to get leaner than they think they need to get. So it's usually a matter of consistency over a long period of time that actually gets them the results. And that's what gets rid of the problematic areas. There's a few ways I measure progress and help them do that. First thing is you can use scale weight as a measurement. It's quantitative feedback, remember, it's a number on the scale, but looking at the qualitative feedback around how a diet is planned is what's so important as well. How the clothes are fitting, how hungry they are, how much better they're feeling, all matters. What you don't want to do is have something where it's just A, B, C and you can't stick to it and then you get to a position where you're constantly falling off and trying to scramble to get the results before the next holiday. You owe it to yourself to make this change so don't give up, follow through on what works for you, eating foods you like using that 80-20 rule. And it's necessary to take your time. Patience is what's needed here. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen in a few weeks either. And I've noticed this. I used to be 46 pounds heavier and I couldn't fit in any of my clothes. And now I'm able to wear these tighter shirts and not feel self-conscious because when you're able to do this consistently over a period of time with the right strategy, that is what's going to help in your individual situation. So remember, what works for one person is never gonna be exactly what works for the next and the next and the next. And I've been doing this for years now. I've coached hundreds and hundreds of people into losing the belly fat for good, but also making sure they build muscle and actually feel stronger and get healthier. And if you want some golden advice on this, drop me a message with YouTube vid and I'll send you over my secret guide, which I've only given to private clients in the past, but I'm gonna be sharing it out for all of you guys because I think you have the potential to make the change in yourself. So drop me a DM on Instagram at asri.zacharia and I will send it over to you. And remember, you can do this. Everyone has the potential to do this. It's just a matter of following through on what works for you. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and drop a comment with any thoughts that you have and any questions that you have. I'd be happy to help. And if you want some more direct help, drop me a message on Instagram at asri.sacro.